Hey guys, we are being asked to solve this equation for x, right? There's a few different ways we can do it, but for this example, we are going to complete the square, okay? First step when I'm completing the square is I want to get my variables alone, okay? Which basically means I don't want that minus 29 there anymore, okay? So what do I do to get rid of it? I add 29 to both sides, right? Keep it balanced. Those go away, so I end up with x squared minus 8x equals 4 plus 29 gives me 33. Okay, now completing the square. My whole goal when completing the square is to end up with something that looks kind of like this, okay? It's not going to be 2 and 10. It's going to be different numbers, but I want a set of parentheses squared equal to something, okay? So, what I need to do is to figure out what number I can add to this side to make it so it factors to a parentheses squared, okay? So to find that number, what I'm going to do is take b divided by 2 and square that, okay? Now you're like, internet math lady, I do not see a b anywhere. <laughs> what we are referring to with b when we're talking quadratics is the number in front of my x, okay? So in this case, the number in front of my x is negative 8, okay? So I'm going to have negative 8 divided by 2 squared, okay? Negative 8 divided by 2 gives me negative 4. And when I square negative 4, I get a positive 16, okay? So now watch what happens when I add 16 to both sides, okay? I'm adding 16 here and here. I can do this as long as I do it to both sides. I can do whatever I want, right? I can add, subtract, multiply, divide as long as I do it to both sides. But because I figured out this b divided by 2 squared was 16, I believe that adding 16 to both sides will help me solve this somehow. Okay, let's see if I'm right. Okay, so on this side, I'm left with x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 33 plus 16 gives me 49. Okay, now what? Now I am going to factor this side. Okay, now if I were to go about the way you've probably been factoring, if you need to review, I'll link one in the corner. I would take 16, right? Multiply it by, there's an invisible one here, right? Multiply it by one. So I would be looking for two numbers that multiply to 16 and add to negative eight. And that would be negative four and negative four, right? Negative four times negative four gives me 16. Negative four plus negative four gives me negative eight. Again, if you were like, you were just speaking a foreign language. I'll link that video in the corner, okay? So when I do that, that means I would have x minus 4 times x minus 4. And this still equals 49, right? Now, I can write x minus 4 times x minus 4. They're the same. So I can write that as x minus 4 squared, right, equals 49, now, as you do this more and more, you'll probably get used to, okay, we found 16 using this. And so when I factor it, I know it's going to be the same parenthesis, right? And guess what? That negative 4 was the b divided by 2, okay? If you want to go on and factor it like normal, that's great. But you probably will start to notice that pattern, which is great, okay? From here, I'm still just trying to solve for x, right? So I need to get rid of this squared. To get rid of a squared, I take the square root, okay? But just like always and forever, we need to do it to both sides, right? When I take the square root of both sides, this squared and the square root cancel, right? So on this side, I'm just left with x minus 4, okay? Now this is equal to the square root of 49, which you're probably thinking is 7, and you're totally right. What we have to remember is when we introduce square roots into a problem, we need to remember our plus or minus, okay? So my answer is actually going to be plus or minus 7. Why is that? Because 7 times 7 is 49, right? Which is what my square root was asking me for. What number times itself gives me this number? 
But also, negative 7 times negative 7 is also 49, okay? So my answer could be 7. It could also be negative 7, so we have to include both, okay? All right, now this is when, because there are two, I kind of like to split them off, okay? So we've got one this way and one this way, okay? So on this side, I'm going to have the positive 7. So I've got x minus 4 equals 7. And on the other side, I'm going to have x minus 4 equals negative 7, okay? And then I'm just going to solve both of those. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides here. Get x equals 11. There is one of my answers, okay? And then... I'm going to solve this one, add 4 to both sides, and I get x equals negative 3, and that is my other answer, okay? So you could plug in 11 for x, it would come out true. You can plug in negative 3 for x, and it will come out true, okay? This also means that this problem factored would be x minus 11 times x plus 3, okay? Okay? All right, you might be thinking, all right, internet lady, if I had just, from the beginning, subtracted four from both sides, I could have just factored it like normal. This is true. <laughs> but I wanted to show you um, completing the square where the numbers came out pretty, okay? They will not, oh, I just realized that was off the screen. Sorry, that's an x minus 11 times x plus three. Um, they will not always come out pretty. In fact, a lot of times, most of the time when you are using completing the square will be because it can't factor pretty, okay? If you want an example where it doesn't factor pretty and you have a plus or minus with a square root, exciting things, I'll link a video in the corner for you. But hopefully this made sense. And if it did, if you could hit the like button, that helps me a lot. But hopefully this made sense. Bye!